So, One Planet Development, um, what is it and how does it um, help people to get off grid? Um, so, One Planet Development, I think, is absolutely fantastic. There's a book um, that was written in the 90s um, that was called Low Impact Development by Simon Fairley. I think that's his name right. Um, and he called in that, he put an argument across for a third class of planning permission because in England, um, and previously to 2012 in Wales, there were, and I say, I'm not too sure about Scotland, that's a little bit out of my knowledge zone, um, but, uh, but there were two planning permission um, categories of you'd have residential planning permission and then you'd have agricultural planning permission. And in his book, he called for a third class for an ecological small holding so that people could reduce their carbon footprint, could live on the land and could be eco-sustainable but not have to contend with all the planning issues. And in 2012, the One Planet Development was, was created, which was fantastic. There was a similar scheme running in Pembrokeshire um, beforehand, but, uh, but One Planet Development kind of took it kind of nationally over Wales, which was fantastic. And, uh, and you might be thinking, oh, why would, the, why would the government, why would the Welsh government do something so, so, so nice to, uh, to help people to, to get off the grid and to be sustainable and live off the land and uh, and well when you kind of look at the actual the official reasons for it it's uh, the official reasons were that it's to uh, to enrich local land-based economies so it's uh, it's a little bit capitalist at its uh, at its core but it's a great a great system and it is a great way for for people to get living on land that they own in houses that they have built that have to be carbon neutral which i think is really really good um but yeah so what classes as a one planet development so this is all to my understanding of it um so if you are looking into this then there are a lot of resources out there and the center for alternative technology and mccunt would be an absolutely great place to get started to uh, to go see um see how you can kind of like reduce your eco carbon footprint because that is what it is all based on so everybody has a uh, an ecological footprint and it is measured in hectares per person so the global average for the, the not global average sorry the uk average is five hectares per person my personal one i just did the did the test and uh, i'll put a link to uh, to it in the description if anyone's interested to see what your scores are i got 3.42 which i don't think is too bad to be fair it's it's below average it's uh, it's a couple of points below average but yeah my man is terrible but um, but if you're doing one planet's development you uh, you have to have a starting point of your car ecological carbon footprint will be needs to be 2.4 moving over the course of five years to 1.88 which is a lot of lifestyle changes and uh, and yeah so that is quite a drastic cut but that is that is brilliant i think you know people that are able to able to kind of make those lifestyle changes for the planet i think that that's brilliant and you know as preppers live like shtf happened and you won't notice when it does so what are the what are the criteria for the one planet development what do you kind of have to meet so you have to build a home that is carbon neutral during its build and during its existence so that's going to be how you're heating it um the materials that you're using it's all got to like be locally kind of like off your land it can't be brought in because then you'd have the carbon cost of, of materials being transported and being created so it is quite a strict criteria things like straw bale houses work really really well because lots of people have kind of access to straw don't have to go far you can like wheelbarrow it or whatever um so it's not got the carbon cost for the transport sport of it um and yeah and it also i mean it's how you're kind of like heating and things like biodigesters um for for cooking and heating um they're anaerobic um 
digesters that you get biogas from they're they're really kind of they're really really good and fit with the opd specs um and um so yeah i mean if i was going to go opd i do have a gas propane bottle in my caravan that i use sometimes um so i wouldn't be able to have that and like i say caravans wouldn't be uh wouldn't be classing as OPD because they are obviously not made from natural materials whatsoever. So if I was going to go onto a one planet development, then I would have to make quite a lot of carbon change, uh, lifestyle changes to put down my carbon footprint and uh, get my ecological footprint down. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of, I think, you know, the fact that I've, I was a bit shocked when I looked at my ecological footprint and I got 3.42 and I was like, oh, oh man that's that's a little bit I thought I'd do better than that but then thinking about it I don't live I don't live in something that has been built from from the land that I am on um and yeah and as well the uh the other thing you've kind of got to think about with uh, OPD it's like everything that you have is got on your land is giving you everything that you need in your life and that is going to be including finances so you have to have some sort of a business model um, and when you go in and put in an application to go for one planet development it's quite a long and expensive process it is by no means bypassing any planning permission and you are more likely to be turned down in my experience for one planet development than you would if you were just kind of going and setting up a small holding by just buying an old property or whatever um, and going on residential planning permission um, in cartilage law if you've got caravans or wanted to kind of like have small like kind of I guess kind of classed as non-temporary yeah non-temporary cartilage buildings or whatever while you were doing maintenance on a property so I'll put a link to the video that I talk a bit more about the different types of planning permission in the description for that if anyone's interested um so yeah back to back to the process of one planet development so what do you need to do so you would need to have a five-year plan so this would be something that you would basically would have to go and buy your land which is the investment for that i'm going to do a little bit of a news reader notice for uh, for this one because this is the uh, this is the official um the official kind of criteria for where you're allowed to put a one planet development which is pretty much um pretty much wherever the planning permission um of residential or agricultural falls um so section four describes it as the one planet development may take a number of forms they can either be single homes cooperative communities or larger settlements they may be located within or adjacent to existing settlements or be situated in the open countryside. So that is pretty much anywhere, but you are still going to be contending with potential kind of other neighbours that are like, oh gosh, we don't want people coming in, like moving in off grid and building a little hippie paradise or whatever. And there's been quite a few people that have gone and spent the money on the land spent the money on the on the planning applications and then not being able to go and go through with their plan and there's also been a lot of people that have bought land and then built to OPD specs and then gone to get the retrospective planning permission um which is sometimes a little bit of a sneaky way around it but it's it's not worked and they've just spent a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort so it's one of those things that's kind of it's talked about quite a lot but it's in reality it's just as difficult as if you wanted to go and buy a piece of land and just live on it um under under agricultural planning permission or residential planning permission living on the land with one planet development is not any easier sadly um i mean it's still a scheme in its infancy which i mean it's got a lot of room it's it's like not even 10 years old yet it was 2012 it was it came into effect um 
so it's it's got a lot of a lot of growing room still i feel personally um and it's it's really good that it is in place and as a saving throw um if anyone plays dungeons and dragons you know when the dm's like right yeah right yeah you've got a saving throw and you're like my good gosh yeah i really really hope i get this one if you get to that point at uh and you've got an eviction and you're living on some land and you've done everything to one planet's development specifications and you can instantly slot into that life then you might be able to get through on the one planet development planning if you have contravened agricultural or residential planning if you're in Wales so that is that is one kind of use for the APD and as I kind of see it unless you've got a lot of money in the bank um like the sort of money that you'd have if you were buying um just land generally to go live on it you're not going to save any money with going for one planet development um and with one planet development i mean you've got a five-year plan that you have to you have to agree when you start out which is part of your planning permission and if that will get checked up on and if you don't meet those criteria and you don't keep to the 2.4 ecological footprint um towards the 1.88 ecological footprint on the five-year plan then you could find that you've lost your commission and that you've lost everything that you've built and as I say they are very very strict criteria I mean it's it's achievable it's totally achievable but you've also got to think about things like I mean like transport if you were living on an OPD and you were wanting to run a car you'd have to use an electric car that you only used from your own solar panels so you know unless you've got a lot of batteries to to swap out or one of those old-fashioned milk float things um then you know i don't really i don't really see how transport would work on the opd which when you consider you also have to make all of the money that the that the government standards um think that people should have to live on from that land as well you're basically signing up to go and settle the land and start a business at the same time um if you're using it as a saving throw then it is something that you know you could put your heads together and be like right okay we need to figure out business so we can keep our land if they're gonna let us stay with the opd but uh, but yeah it's it's uh it's a lot of a lot of expense a lot of lot of effort a lot of time and you're not guaranteed results with one planet development but like i keep saying it's it's a scheme that is in its infancy and it's got a lot of potential and if people could get their their ecological footprint down to the 2.4 that you're meant to be starting off with i mean that would be that would be absolutely fantastic and amazing for the planet so yeah i hope you found this helpful and um, and yeah i hope i've not been rambling on too long a lot of people have been asking me about um, about opd so if i'm uh, if we're sat next to each other around a fire pit and i've just shown you this video it's because people keep asking me the questions and i keep forgetting bits and then having to get back in touch like, oh i forgot this or i forgot that or i just found this out so um so yeah here it all is in one place i hope you guys are all good peace and love